Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome to Maru. Here in the bottom left spawning is our blue Terran player. And in the top right is our red protos. We have max packs. This is a map that has very pretty colors, by the way. I don't know why that is, but like the colors red and blue look very nice. Some maps have a filter on it, which makes the colors much, much worse. Like kind of like a, like a grit, like kind of grayish, like light blue. Sometimes you have like some, like some super red filter on top of it. It makes everything look very ugly. But here it makes everything look a bit more fluorescent, I think. Like a bit more saturated. And I like that. Hey, does this guy have a disco going on in his nexus? What is this? You see that? I've never seen this before. He's like pulsating, turning into like the, 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 the snake green and the a more pale version of green. What is this? I've never seen that before in my life. Does this only happen at high graphics, maybe? I feel like there's a lot of interactions that I'm not aware of in this game in high graphics. But enough of that. We have Max Pax versus Maru here on Hecate. I think one of my favorite maps on the new map pool plays out. Uh, this map plays like a beast. Absolutely fun. As the Reaper is going to get produced here. No scout coming out of Maru. Barracks into refinery. No scout. Absolutely low tier play here by Maru. As Max Pax builds a Zealot. This is... I'm... I'm I'm sticking with my opinion. I've held this opinion for a long time. And the most important thing, for the people that are not aware, if you have an opinion, is to stick with it, no matter whether you get proven wrong or not. The only thing that matters with an opinion is how long you've held that opinion. And if you've held it for a very long time, then you're just gonna keep it as well. That is literally the only thing that matters. And my opinion on the salad is, is that it, 95% of the time, it freaking sucks. It just doesn't do anything. It is useless. It, it makes your build significantly worse. It delays your second gas. It's just garbage all around. Yet Max Pax and Hero keep sending it across the map. Now, we're going to see if this Zealot is going to do something this time around. I'm going to spoil the answer already. The answer is no. The Zealot is going to die to this Reaper and to this Marine. Max Pax is going to be surprised. He's like, oh, my Zealot didn't work again. This is now the 30th consecutive time that my Zealot has achieved nothing in life. And, oh, even the SCP doesn't go down. Minus 100 minerals. Major delay here on everything that, that Max Pax cares about. It's legit achieved nothing. Congratulations. Another failure of a unit being pushed out in the early game. And this is why it's important to stick with your opinions. If you truly believe that no matter how many times people much better than you build the Zealot, I truly believe... That the Zealot is garbage. This also is not a good move. He's gonna lose this adept. The Reaper should pop out. Maru is falling. What is he doing? Maru is sleeping over here. He should have taken out this adept for free. A uh, rookie move. Absolute rookie move. Is still gonna get the kill. Max Pax could have escaped there. This has been one of the worst starts possible for Max Pax. As he's lost two units already. And has killed absolutely nothing. And like a three second delay on the orbital command. That is worth nothing uh, either. Smack Specs uh, is not aware of anything. He's playing two, three, three gate blink so far. He's adding in the stalkers. His Reaper is going to go in for a scout. even going to get the information. Maru is on fire. And Max Specs defense is terrified. As this Reaper, he, he gets all the info he needs. You know that? He gets all the info he needs. Double Cyclone. Uh, this is an interesting move. Oh my god, Max Pax forgets to cancel the shade here. This is awful. This is awful. Now, I'm not one to quickly call a game. But if I were, I'd say that this game is over. Because holy crap, what an awful start. If I had this start as Max Pax, I would start thinking about the next game already. Was well, the map again? You know, just the strategy that you're going to play there. It's... Dark Shrine being added in. Now that's a wild move. But it's a move that I actually kind of like. 
if there was a raven out, this would freaking suck. This would be the worst thing that you can do. But there is no raven out. So it's actually really nice. Starport is being built. And these DTs are going to finish at a nice timing. Nexus should go down, I think. We hardly have any stalkers. We're going to go up to 11, 5 minutes and 13 seconds into the game. That should be enough. Ooh, blinks forward. Prism slightly out of position. But the bunker goes down. Stim will finish in 20 seconds. Cyclones will, will help out until then. Charge should start as well. Charge should start as well. It is important here that charge starts. There's only a single tank. This is fairly risky, isn't it? This is fairly risky. That stalker didn't quite get picked up. These two cyclones are fairly low. Dark Shrine is now done. There's plenty of scans available, by the way. Plenty of scans available here for Maru. As triple DTs are going to get warped in. Please just wait until the mules drop. Please wait until the mules drop. Or until your opponent moves out. This is not the move. This ain't the play. Maru not quite paying attention. I don't think so, at least. As these DTs are gonna start going and misses the first scan. How is that even possible? Doesn't respond to the scan in the natural. Did Maru just fall asleep? was someone at the door and Maru forgot to pause which is on Spotify changing his music absolute blunders over here by Maru loses 13 workers despite being completely ready for that with the scans loses the tank as well now here on top of all of this and then you know, a couple of stalkers in a bit of trouble gateway count is three is gonna go up to six so was that another DT I think so three DTs have gone down three DTs though for 16 workers it's it's a very reasonable trade here. Now, the first five minutes of max specs were so bad that it is still imaginable that, that Maru is going to kill his opponent with this push. If that happens, then it's time to balance line, first of all, but also that would be very sad for max specs. It would be very sad for max specs. He's just now getting all of his extra gateways. He's throwing in a robo bay as well. Has three zealots in this thing. What is the sentry count? It's at zero. He actually has no units. Okay, no, wait, there's one sentry here. Here comes the Prisma. Cyclones move out of position just in time for these zealots to come in. Mines moving over. Will borrow as the Cyclones are going to help out. Oh, this is scary. This is scary. There's no scan available anymore as the DT is coming in. Maru forgetting momentarily that there were invisible units out on the map. Good control on this bio force. Oh, the DTs morph into an arc. Very well done here by Max. As the Prism stays alive temporarily at least. The Immortal in the back is dishing out serious, serious damage. We're gonna start a Colossus. Plus one is ready to go. 61 workers to 44. Now, this is a classic Max Packs moment to build a fort base, if I've ever seen one. I'm not quite sure why he, he does this so consistently, but he really does believe in, in getting a fort base before you truly need it. So he's going to throw down the fort despite already being up a base. It's going to be an SEV pool. In this case, I actually like fort bases. Don't mind it at all. Single zealot is going to get the run by in. Oh, SEVs are spotted by this zealot. That is a huge spot here. Batteries, sentries. It's all you need right now. The beetle said that it was love. But Harstam says that sentries and batteries are much better if you're trying to hold an SEV pool. This is still going to be somewhat scary. These batteries are not quite done yet. Here comes the hold, or the potential hold, I should say. Big mine shots. First of all, Zealots are trying to pick up some reinforcements. Next warping is going to be essential here in the hold. Yeah, I think this looks fine. This looks doable. This looks playable. And this is a big, fat win here for El Maximus. The Paximus. Who stood and delivered. Dropping towards the main. We still have blink right on these stalkers. Yeah, we definitely do. 25 SCVs have gone down during this. It means that the income is heavily favoring max packs here. Another scan needs to be used to clear a DT. His army is going to get cleared as well. Still fine mining, of course, for Amaru. 
six medivacs out, two more Vikings coming in, but I think the moment you're gonna have your third Colossus out, we're, we're looking at a situation in which Marines are practically useless, and even Marauders are gonna be taking quite a beating. TT sees everything, or at least everything that's relevant here. Would love to see you just start slicing away at reinforcements. Like, even if you're forcing out scans now, trading a scan for a DT at this point is super worth it for Max Packs. Like, he's going to be okay with that trade, 100%. 100% as we get a fourth base up once more. Love to see it. He says, I'm only mining 800 minerals a minute more than my opponent. That ain't enough yet. And it ain't. He wants, he wants more cash, he wants more everything. I would like to see more Immortals, probably. As another Zealot run by is gonna get sent out over here. Just a Disruptor, just anything from this Robo at this point would be good. Zealots here do get caught. This Observer is uh, essential when it comes to sending in the next Zealot run bys going to allow Maxpex to make a more informed decision. Maru actually won 21 supply, 88 army supply to 73. I don't quite understand how this works, but it is working. Zealot run by pops in. Oh, SCV is once again moving across the map. There are six Vikings and there's three Colossus. There's 21 Zealots. There's also five mines. Is it possible that Maru is going to walk up here and win the game? It's unlikely, but maybe? For, for, for Templar, we'll morph into two Archons. Disruptor needs to be useful. Clear some of these mines before the fight truly starts. Oh, there go the SCVs at a very high pace. There goes one of the mines. This honestly wasn't the greatest Disruptor shot I've seen in my life. There's a timer here on Maru as the Zealots are being taken out. Stalkers now blink forward. I'm not quite sure what that was all about, but they will start fighting against these Vikings. 130 supply, 74 super battery gets activated. With the Immortal in the back and with the Triple Colossus, GG gets called as Max Pax wins game number one after an awful start, but a brilliant follow-up after that start with the DTs. Maru with the poor response and does 1-0 in favor of Max. Okay, for the people not aware, this is the build, okay? This is the build. If you're a Terran player and you don't have a brain... So basically, if you've seen the Wizard of Oz, you have one guy without courage, one guy without a brain and the other guy doesn't have a heart now imagine if you were in the wizard of oz and you didn't have any of these three like you're an absolute loser you can always play this build you can just build an ebay on your opponent's natural play gas first into barracks and then get a, a factory out here And then what you do is you build two reactors. That is the build. So what I'm saying is that when Maru auditioned for the Wizard of Oz, he auditioned for three characters at once. He didn't get the role. There was, an, there was another Terran player that took it. <laughs> His name will remain protected for now. Perhaps in a future episode I'll tell you all about it. Maybe after I lose a game to this particular strategy again. <laughs> if he builds... Okay, if it's Hellions, I can almost respect it. But it's gonna be Cyclones. I can't... I can't respect someone that builds Cyclones. What is this? He's one base all inning. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. Sorry. Maru didn't audition for all three people in the Wizard of Oz. He just auditioned for the one without the brain. This build is awful. This, this, this just doesn't seem good. I don't understand this. This seems really bad for a build. Oh, Max gets a scout here. This is huge! That's a huge scout. Sees that's gonna be a one base tank all in. Now the question that I have... He should cancel this battery, by the way. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Void Ray. I was I was wondering if we get Void Ray or Oracle first. I'm almost tempted to say get an Oracle first anyway, just for banter. That's a good cancel there. You love to see it. The worst call probably would have been Phoenix because they don't really achieve anything. The Oracle at least would force your opponent to be more all in because you can kill workers. And the Phoenix, you need so many Phoenix in order for them to be worth it, so it's not good. But the Void Ray, 
that, that immediately has so much value and void rays in combination with batteries uh, that is something else i really feel like a second void ray on oracle here i, um, I almost feel like an oracle would, would would be better but i could be wrong this adapt is seeing so much maxpex is really good at keeping this adapt alive i'd love for him to not cancel i he's he's doing a very good job here when it comes to yeah he's, he's forcing the opponent back look at this maru falling apart against the single adept this is like watching my terran play against someone 700 mmr higher adept stays alive as well i actually think that the game is pretty much over at this point like M maxpex is so ridiculously far ahead at this point and he's gonna shade in again like you can't even make this up the only way max Pax loses is if he loses every single worker in the main base to this mind drop because uh, maru is getting completely outplayed in like seven different ways right now holy crap should have gone for the double cyclone build mate should have gone for the double cyclone ah, this is this is one of the worst builds i've seen in my entire life i don't understand it at all this is exactly how it was going to play out as well when I was thinking about it. Max Pax is mentally ready. He's physically ready. He saw the reactor on the factory. Knew what was kicking off. He's not going to get the kill though. Oh, that is a big deal. He's going to lose quite some workers here. Five to start. As this Medifact does get to escape. But at the same time... Okay, seven workers. It's actually quite a few. That is frustrating. That's real frustrating. The medevac does get blasted here in the end. I think Maxpex can move across the map and try and win the game. That could be a mistake because there's another double mind drop coming in. Maxpex still is up seven workers. Seven worker losses is quite a bit though. Here comes another double drop. Max is quick enough. I think. Oh, that was a terrible split. Not good. Not good. As he continues pushing in right now, uh, there's two void rays with this. Oh, he's gonna target down that medevac. Well, it's now just ki gonna kill every single marine. There's two cyclones already done. Two more in production. It's gonna bring the total up to four. Two times two is four. Da -da 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 -da. It's gonna be capable of killing maybe one. That would be huge. No! Oh my god. Chaos, destruction, and pain. As this uh, medevac is still going to end up dying. <clears throat> but loses an extra stalker for it. So despite these pretty significant probe losses, I still feel like Max Pax is in a playable position. Maru's playing Mac. Maru's playing Mac. I could have figured that out, but I hadn't. He was building Stim though earlier, so that's really what threw a wrench in my mind. Void Ray's moving in. Phoenix in the back is going to lift one of these Cyclones. There's still three Cyclones remaining right now. There's no more lifts around. The problem is just, is uh, how are you going to deal with the Stalker and Zealot as well while attacking the Voids? Okay, there's one more Cyclone that goes down. Adios, Maru. 2-0 in favor of Max Pax here as GG gets caught. And Max Pax puts himself on, uh, on, on, on match point in this series right now. Woo. Phenomenal foreigner, Mr. Max Pax. Phenomenal play. What a terrible build by Maru. Right. Double gas opener for Maru after uh last game it's going to uh switch it up a little bit max pax is always with that uh, 17 scout this is his favorite scout timing he always opens up with 17 scout what's he gonna do you think stargate it's possible this time the map is going to be west by the way oh no yes Cancelled the Zealot. Very good call. Phenomenal call, you could even say. I love it when he cancels Zealots. Uh, that sparks joy. Because you kind of give hope to the idiots who think that Zealot first is good. And then you crush their dreams. Which is one of the most important things that you can do in life. It's crushing the dreams of idiots. Reaper into reactor. CC on the high ground then. Those are the rules. Reaper found the probe. It was actually kind of a big deal. I almost feel like you want to build a CC on the low ground then. If you kill the probe. It's like, mm, maybe. Adept finishes up. Stargate starts. Second Adept should start soon as well. So battery starts in the main base. Okay. That's allowed, technically. Not recommended, though.
mine on the way. Starport, what is this? Halfway done. Uh, this is going to be the six marine mine drop. This is one of my favorite builds that Maru has been playing. He played it in the last series that he did against Max Max. He played it three times in a row, I remember. It's a very powerful build. This is, I didn't like last game's build one bit, but this this particular build, I'm a huge freaking fan of. I think it's so good. And Maru's execution with it is fantastic as well. It's going to cancel the, the medevac though after getting the scout off on the Stargate. I think that might be an accurate call here. I think that is very accurate even. CC about to finish up. Max Pax Plate is kind of safe. It's now forced into Phoenix Colossus. It's the only thing that makes any sense from here on out. Look at this positioning on the mine. This is beautiful. This is good. This is solid. Second mine is going to be kind of placed in line of that first one. That's a hit, no? That is a hit. And it's going to be a second hit. Oh! <laughs> Maru has a brain like a machine, this guy. He knows exactly what the flight path is going to be. He has like one of these flight maps, you know? And the pilots have to say exactly what route they're going to be flying. Like, uh... Maru is so accurate. He, he had the exact coordinates there. Fantastic. I freaking love it. Liberator here, almost done. Oh, this is going to be a weird little push. You know what's interesting here? Is that Maru is playing as if he's the underdog. Like... So far, at least the second game and the third game, it feels like he's just... He doesn't believe in a macro game here. This is a serious investment. It's going to build a third CC on location. We have an immortal being pushed out here. Loving this liberator, just being routed around. Boop. Taking an alternative path here. These phoenixes now moving in position. Here comes the stalker. A little bit of kiting. A little bit of having a good time. Hits that once. Oh my... <laughs> Such a sick little move there by uh, Max Pax. Good pickup. Snipes the first Cyclone as well. This control is phenomenal. This is being placed on the Western United server. So better ping here for uh, for Maru than for Max Pax. This Liberator is going to do quite some damage. Five, six worker kills perhaps. That is quite a bit. Six workers for a lip. It's not the end of the world, but it is, it is not quite great either. I think this Immortal needs to be cancelled and we'll have to wait and see... If a Colossus is going to be built, I'm not a huge fan of this second Immortal. I'm not a huge fan of that at all. Pylon will be necessary. As these Phoenixes are mov moving across. Could they actually get a pickup here? I think you could have fought that. The Cyclone sometimes looks scarier than it is in reality. It just doesn't have that much HP. No, oh my god, you can't make this up. Here comes the mine. If he retargets to the one in the back, that would have been epic. Because then he would have gotten another kill. That would have been really sick, actually. Six uh, Vikings still... Uh, sorry, six Phoenixes is still out. There's a Raven here, which is weird because he didn't get the upgrade for the Interference Matrix. It is possible that Maru forgot that he needs to get an upgrade for the Interference Matrix, but this is obviously quite useless. Unless he's planning on going for a Viking tank push in mid-game, then an anti-armor missile might be useful. Double turrets up. Here comes an attack. Can you do this? So everything tells me in my mind, mentally, that you can't do this. Oh, wow. Now some bad lifts here. Phoenixes do stay alive though. This is a scary little push that he's going for. Two immortals. That's a lot of phoenixes. If he would have cleared all those marines there, maybe. But without clearing those marines, then this is suicidal, no? Absolutely. Well, Viking gets taken out for free. That's something. I think this can be taken out as well. He could definitely fight this with just the phoenixes. This is a significant army force. Gets a lift there. Wow. Got a lift on the tank and then right click the raven. Very cute move. Very cute move indeed. Tanks are now semi in range of this little push in. There's four tanks out. Six phoenixes here. Three more gates on the way. It's gonna go up to five, make that six. Second forge. Loving the way that Max Pax is playing here. Loving the way that Max is doing. 
He has such good control. But that's the thing about Maru. Maru also has very good control. He has two Vikings out. He started with one Viking. That one died and rebuilt two. There's a Ghost Academy with this as well. Nine more seconds till it's done. Good lord. Good lord, good lord, good lord. 1-1 one, one is now done. Is he just gonna push with this? Two medevacs, two vikings. What do you follow up with from this uh, from this starport? It feels pretty important. It feels pretty freaking important. Yeah, it's it's going to be a tank viking ghost push here with 1-1. One, one. These are really hard to stop. But they're also really hard to set up. So the most difficult thing for Maru here is going to be to get a move out across the map without the zealots appearing everywhere. That is the hardest thing. And Maxpex is so good. We've seen this in his PVZs, but also in his PVTs. He's just on the map. And the moment you move out, he absorbs it with his army and then just sends in the zealots. And these zealots, they're really the key to his victories often. They're the key to his victories. I really hope he doesn't send in anything quite yet. Look at this unit spread. There's zealots everywhere right now. There's two down here. There's four in the prism. Three, four to the right. Three towards the bottom. Phoenixes do get taken out. And here comes the send in. Three places at the same time. These zealots are also going to be sent in towards the natural, I can only imagine. It's double turrets. Max Pax paying attention. Yes, of course he is. He's going to drop towards the top side. We'll lose the prism. That is frustrating. Maru pulls back. No, he's going to continue in. He's going to lose... I think at least seven, eight workers here. Maybe even a bit more as a ghost is being taken out. This push, however, managed to reach the other side of the map. The Viking count is at five. The Colossus count is at three. Disruptors are being pushed out two at a time. That is big. More zealots need to go across the map, though, for this to really be worth it. Yeah, there we go. This is a good call. Base needs to be given up here for Max Pax as well. This base cannot be held. It is as simple as that. Maxpex is well aware of this, or should be well aware of that. Zealot run by wasn't for the run by, but for a potential flank. I think that's a misread here out of uh, Maxpex. They should be going across the map. Maru is not dealing with this whatsoever. Units just rallying forward. As Maxpex is going to try to hold. 160 supply to 149. Base gets given up. These zealots are dishing way too much damage. Dishing out way, way too much here. They're now going in. We'll take out maybe a Viking. Oh, good pickup control here. Maru is going to lose two Vikings anyways. Perhaps even going to lose this bad boy as well. At the same time... Oh, we have a big fight here. My apologies. I missed that. It seems like Maxpex didn't miss it, though. <clears throat> so he gets the pullback. Marauders get taken out there by one disruptor shot. There's still another disruptor in there. And I think we're one big zealot run by away from this game pretty much ending. Maxpex legit just outplaying his opponent. In, in, in almost every way possible. Just purely based on speed. But his decision making is is also so solid. He's actually been playing a really good series. Max Pax has had a really good day so far. Holy crap. There's no extra upgrades, which is the one point of criticism that I do have. It's that he didn't quite continue that. But that's such a minor thing now, because it didn't feel like Maru was going to get any upgrades extra either. He does have the plus two on the way. Once again, the Zealot run by are set up. Now, the thing is that if you watch Clem play versus Max Pax, Clem is hyper aware of the fact that there's going to be run bys everywhere. And it seems like Max Pax is getting caught off guard a little bit here by these run bys the entire time. He's like, oh right, Zealots. Oh, I doubt he's going to do that again. But no, there's always Zealots everywhere. If you're a Terran player playing against Max Pax, you should expect that at all times. Here comes a blink on top of these medevacs. There's tanks at home, but that means that these can't really be evacuated. Because it's not like an army can join in to try and save it. Maxpex is moving forward. He's on five base, or is going to be on five base versus three right now. There is a fourth orbital command, but it's not really doing much of anything. I think a single uh, warping of stalkers would be hugely beneficial here for the Danish Protoss. As he's getting a prism as well. And I think he wants to engage into this. Sensor tower about to finish up. Yeah, Maru wants to move on the map, but he can't. He, he, he just can't. There's more zealots coming in. 
more zealots coming in for sure. There's three deep, uh, depots. There's three disruptors here. Fantastic stuff. That gets a connection. Two ghosts go down. Maru taking a fourth base is actually really nice for Max Pax because it allows him to once again go for run buys while also attacking a position. So Max Pax gets the trade. This is the perfect timing for Max Pax to trade. It's the only point of criticism I often have of Max Pax in the very late game is that he struggles uh, transitioning out of a very zealot heavy army. So ideally Max Pax is trading the entire time. Now as a Terran player you kind of just want to sit on lower bases against that. And then eventually have a massive army that you can't lose the zealots anymore. I mean, this is 30 zealots. They don't fight very well. They're quite crap. Dark Shrine now gets thrown in here. I think Max Pax has realized... Sorry, Maru has realized it. Maru is an intelligent player, of course. He knows exactly what to do. Max Pax... Max Pax needs to be careful, though. He really needs to be careful. He's coming in. He wants to get a trade in doesn't quite have enough stalkers here this is why i wanted one warp in of stalkers this was a really really quite poor fight and i think maru is reading this situation perfectly it seems silly to stay on three base versus someone on six or on five bases but this is still four gas max Pax is just building zealots right now max Pax needs to change his mindset a little bit here and I either needs to get some type of a prism in if he doesn't get a prism in then it could be hard still there's still a lot of Vikings in the air and there's no Colossus. I, I think Maru probably should be trying to stay at home. Upping the ghost count. These are the priorities, in my mind at least, for the Terran. He's gonna get some decent uh, kills here on these Disruptors. One Disruptor goes down, but two Marauders also fall. Mines behind all of this will clear a bunch of these Zealots. At the same time, the fight continues towards the left. And every time you give Max Pax an ability to harass you while attacking, he takes it. So taking this fort base is basically going to say, hey, Max, I'm I'm ready to fight. I'm not sure if Maru is ready to fight, but I think he has to. He just doesn't have the income anymore otherwise. This is a good start of the fight for Maru. His two disruptor shots hardly hit anything, but that's going to be a big one. Purification Nova hits in a large, large way. And now I think it's just going to be ball into ball into ball into ball into ball. Five disruptors in the back. Zealot run by in the natural and Max packs. It's such a clean freaking series over here. I love the way he played. I love the way he maneuvered. I love this build order choice as well. I liked everything he did. And he gets the W against Maru. And that means 3-0 for his Maru. I think it's the first time he 3 0 Maru in his life. That's a rare... It's very rare for Maru to lose 3 0 in series, I think. That was impressive. Max Pack's still in the game playing. Has he left yet? Max Pax left the game instantly. Wow. Banger of a series. Holy cow. Banger of a series.